What's up guys, Justin here and this is going to be our guide for the season 8 season that's coming out soon on Tuesday. Um, just a little bit about ourselves first, we typically don't play in the off season or if we do it's just for fun, but we have since graduated uh, university so we do have more free time now. Um, so we will be having a stream schedule from roughly 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to roughly 7 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So basically a night schedule for me, um, which works out for me, uh, where we will be streaming uh, ranked most of the time, although we will play with you know, friends and other stuff at the same time. But yeah, looking forward to uh, getting back into game grinding and uh, you know, hopefully get back to Challenger. We can probably do it. And this is just going to be our little segment on what you guys should be looking to do. So we're just going to try and do this in one shot. Um, so let's talk about uh, runes first. Obviously, masters are gone. So um, there are only really a few choices here. Um, I'm just going to say off the bat that um, my opinion is that Shaco either plays as an assassin, uh, which you know is the high percentage of the time Shaco's played as an assassin, and even like the only time you don't need him to play an assassin role, quote unquote, is when uh, your backline outscales their backline, right? In terms of a macro perspective, right? Because if your backline outscales their backline, then all you need to do is you don't need to go and assassin any third AD, you just need to PL, right? And you don't need to peel in any, you know, particular way you can put boxes down, but basically how you peel is you kill the people that have to die if you're uh, carried, right? So, you know, there's not going to be a lot of reason to play any other style except an assassination style, right? Like if you were going to play a tanky style, then uh, like what's the difference between a tank and an assassin, right? Uh, like, sure, Shaco can fill that criteria, but the only reason you would want to play a tank is for your backline, right? But what's the problem with your backline winning on its own? Well, people are diving them. Well, how do I answer the people diving them? Building tank doesn't necessarily answer that, right? It just means that you're tanky. It doesn't mean that, you know, your backline doesn't die. So by having a damage build, you increase your chance of your backline not dying by being able to kill whoever's diving your backline. So I don't really see a justification behind playing anything but a damage-oriented style. As such, we skip the precision tree. There's nothing in here. Press the attack is pretty bad. Lethal temple is pretty bad. Uh, flea is pretty bad. You don't like as an assassin, you don't need this health. You don't build. You're not an attack speed assassin. And press the attack, you don't want that many autos. You don't get that many autos off. You don't get any value out of these keystones. Inspiration, same thing. You don't get value from Unseal Spellbook. You have Smite anyway. Glacial Augment is whatever. Klepto, you don't proc it. Uh, obviously not defensive movement. So we're stuck between Domination and Sorcery. And in between them, uh, in between Comet, you know, Airy, whatever, we, we end up going with either Electrocute or Dark Harvest. So um, let's just leave the Keystone out for now. Uh, we'll just put the obvious things as here, here, here. And then... For our secondary, uh, none of these matter for precision, right? Overheal doesn't matter, you shouldn't be taking damage like that. Take down doesn't matter, you shouldn't be dying, blah, blah, blah. None of this matters. This is on kill, so you don't care about these. Um, you're not really going to be taking this because, like, these assume that they're low or you're low, and either of those assumptions are generally bad. The only one you could take is this, really, if people have more max health than you, but that means you're killing tanks. But... Um, you can go down a better tree to do more damage, which is basically source of tree. Obviously, we say we don't want this, and we might want boots earlier than this, so we don't want to take this. We don't want future smirk, we don't want dematerializer, we're not a laner. Uh, we don't even take flash. Uh, we don't care about business because we have base mechanics as a jungler. We don't really need this because we shouldn't be getting out of line anyway. We want damage. Approach velocity doesn't matter since we're on our own a lot of time, and CDR doesn't matter. So we pretty much lock in on this. And then the only real decisions are going to be uh, these three. In between Electrocute, Dark Harvest, um, Celerity, Absolute Focus, and Scorch or Gathering Storm. Um, we're not taking Predator because we're not someone that is extremely high utility, so we can just get there and then do something. And obviously these are pretty easy. You don't care about healing because you're an assassin. Um, cheap Shot is just going to be worse than Sudden Impact for damage. Um, you don't really want Zombie War because that 
once they see the zombie ward, that means they'll know where you've been as the jungler and you don't want to reveal information. Same thing for Ghost Poro. Like if they see they canceled out of Ghost Poro, you're revealing information, so you take Eyeball. Uh, you don't care about healing, you don't care about CDR because all you have is Tiamat, so you end up taking uh, Relentless Hunter for move speed. And then over here, we're not taking Nullifying Orb, we shouldn't take damage, uh, we don't need spells, and Ultimate Hat doesn't really matter for us. Um, we should be able to get picked per ult anyway. Don't build enough CDR, so it's between Celerity and Absolute Focus, and I'm leaning on Celerity. Why? Because we have a lot of excess ability to generate move speed with uh, you know static... Um, Mobis, things like this, and uh, gaining more move speed. The, so I, when I was testing this, the relative damage increase of Absolute Focus compared to taking Celerity is minimal, but the, the movement speed was noticeable with Celerity, so we just take Celerity over. So here, here comes the crux of our decision. We can either take Scaling Situation, which is Dark Harvest and Gathering Storm, um, which allows us to one-shot um, you know, people without resists, or resist and health uh, without using ultimate in the late game. So let's say Vayne walks up and he does. They don't have uh, health and resistance, health and armor. Then we'll be able to one shot them without using ultimate. Alternatively, we can run electrocute scorch for early game scenarios. So, but then uh, we lose out on that late game initiative and we gain a little more early game initiative. So um, I'm leaning on. So. We have to think about what situations do we need uh, early game situations and what situations do we need late game scenarios, right? And the majority of the time, Shaco is not going to be an early game champion. Um, I don't know what other people tell you. I know a lot of other Shaco players tell you this, but they're like they're probably not playing against uh, good opposing junglers, right? So if you're playing against a good opponent, there's no way a three spell jungler is going to beat a six spell jungler, right? And what I mean by that is you're you're never going to be able to beat Lee Sin, uh, uh, Rek'Sai, Nidalee, or Elise, right? You're never going to be able to beat them one-on-one -on -one if they're playing properly. If they're playing bad, then, you know. Like, you might be able to one-shot them later, but you're never going to be able to scrimmage them in the early game. So against those, it doesn't even matter if you take Electrocute and Scorch because you'll still lose to them, right? So against um, junglers that are going to be strong against you, you should take this combination. Because you're never going to have strong enough value in the jungle 1v1. Now, that's not to say that Electrocute Scorch can't be taken, right? If you're taking Electrocute Scorch there, then you're taking it for the purposes of trying to kill a laner, not for trying to, you know, duel the jungler, right? Um, which is perfectly fine. Um, but let's say you try and kill a laner, right? Well, obviously, you don't beat the jungler, so you have to be trying to kill a laner in a situation where they're not counter ganking. And... Uh, the majority of the situation, the majority of the times, uh, if there's counter gank potential, then you can't go for that gank anyway, right? Unless your laner is like stronger than their laner, right? Like if your laner's Jace and their laner's Maokai, then the 2v2 is flippy. So, but in the majority of situations where laners are equal, then you're not going to be ganking that lane anyway because there's counter gank potential, right? So you might as well scale into the game like this. Um, uh, for that late game potential burst situation. Now let's talk about the situations where you could take Electrocute Scorch. If you're taking Electrocute Scorch, that means um, you could potentially be taking the early game initiative against the opposing jungler, right? So obviously you're not going to beat six spell junglers. You're also not going to beat low cooldown junglers, right? The Olaf, the Kha'Zix situations where they're going to uh, cycle cooldowns while you have no cooldowns to cycle. You're going to lose to those junglers, right? So the only junglers you're really going to take this, or you should possibly take this against for skirmishing, are going to be uh, melee AP non-cycle junglers and melee AP or melee AD non cycle junglers. So we're talking about like Kane who won't be able to cycle two rotations. We're talking about like Gragas that won't be able to cycle two locations. And in those scenarios you can take this and you'll be able to one view on them. Now let me see why I am going to recommend Dark Harvest Gathering Storm for like 90% of situations. Um, obviously number one is going to be that you're not going to be versing those junglers a lot of the time that are weaker than you or even to you. Um, number two, even if you do take Electrocute Scorch, that doesn't mean that jungle 1v1s are jungle 1v1s, right? Like, very rarely do two junglers actually just walk into each other. Like, if both players are good, 
the weaker jungler is never going to check the stronger jungler, right? So even if I'm taking this, and I'm saying, okay, I'm going to go invade their Gragas because I'm stronger than them, that's not the end of the story, right? Just because you take this doesn't mean you get to invade the Gragas, right? You have to take into account the lane push situation. Uh, you know, if your top laner is pushing, uh, is getting pushed in, or your mid laner is getting pushed in, you can't invite, the, you can't invade the top side profitably without their teammates collapsing first, right? So even though you win the jungle one v one, doesn't mean you win the macro uh, invade. So you're only going to be taking the setup when the snowball ability of the game is high, right? You have pushing laners which allow you to invade a jungler that is going to be equal or weaker than you when you take the setup, right? And that happens extremely rarely. Plus, when you do take this, you're missing out on that late game one-shot potential without your ultimate, right? So let's say you took Electrocute Scorch, and now you have to one-shot their AD carry potentially late game with ult. But let's say you take Gathering Storm Dark Harvest, you can one-shot their AD carry without ult late game, use your ult to get away sometimes, and then maybe retract back into the fight to kill their mid laner and stuff, right? So I'm going to say that 90 to 95% of the time, you're going to want to take Dark Harvest and Gathering Storm, um, just for the implication in the in the game. Also, uh, if you're not aware of how macro strategy works, then I would recommend the setup as well. But if you if you are aware of how uh, pushing lanes and invade structure goes, then you can take Electric Good Scorch in those minor scenarios. All right, that's going to be the rune setup. And now let's talk about the item builds. Oops. Doo -doo -doo. All right. So when we talk about the item builds, again, we, uh, we're we putting the priority of Shaco as an assassin, but an assassin that can operate in multiple facets, right? Picking off their backline is important, but that's only important if like your backline like can't win, right? So let's say, uh, let's say they have Vayne, and Vayne is the end-all be-all AD carry for the late game, right? The reason why Vayne is the end-all be-all AD carry for the late game is because when she ult tumbles, she automatically gets the first hit, right? Because you can't auto attack her while she's stealth. So she's always going to get the first hit, which means that if she gets into a fight with any other AD carry, she's going to get the first hit. Assuming they have equal crit and equal attack speed, the enemy AD carry will die first, or your AD carry. So, um, but let's say you have um, Jin, right? Let's say you have Jin versus Vayne, then it's crucial to kill the Vayne because you can't win the fight without killing the Vayne. But let's say you have the Vayne and they have the Jin, right? It doesn't really matter if you kill the Jin because Vayne's going to win anyway. So all you really have to do is kill or appeal for the, the Vayne, right? So the item setup is the same, but how you play the game can be drastically different um, if you understood what I said there. So we start off the game with obviously buying, warding, uh, machete, and Rage Bead. So, uh, small fat, small tidbits on this. Um, you want to buy the warding trinket first. Buying the warding trinket first means that you're generating your second uh, trinket off that ward as quickly as possible. So, let's say you buy machete, then rejuve bead, then trinket, then you're going to be losing out on like a second of timer on the warding trinket. You always want to buy it first. Um, and the reason why we're going rejuve bead over refill pot. So, some other Shaco players um, recommend going refill pot or three pot. Um, here's the truth of the matter, right? Rejuve bead breaks even with refill pot at roughly uh, three minutes, right? So after, you know, three camps. Um, so insofar as maybe three and a half camps. So insofar as you're comparing it to refill pot, it's only better to get refill pot if you think that the early game is going to be in such a situation that you need refill pot, right? Like, if you think that you can get three camps before any action occurs on the map, then Read Your Beat is just going to be a better early game buy, right? That doesn't mean Refill Pot is a bad early game buy. You get more value from it on your initial base and everything. But we're talking about the first exit of the game, right? The first starting of the game. And Read Your Beat, Read Your Beat is going to break even at roughly three minutes. So you're going to take it a high percentage of the time. Uh, one, because you shouldn't be putting yourself to in a position, or you should recognize a position where you could get invaded, right? And let's say even that they do invade. Let's say they do, like, a, I don't know, a red to your blue, and you're doing, like, a raptor red to your blue, and now you're fighting at your blue, right? So now it's 2.30, and you're fighting at your blue. Um, you know, laners are going to do whatever they're going to do, depending on the situation. But if you stay in that situation for 30 seconds, you're still breaking even with Reju Beat, right? So Reju Beat is going to be 
notoriously better in the early game than the refill pot. The refill pot ends up being a little bit better after you have a, a really early base, right? Like where you're not getting value from your Reju bead, like uh, a, a four minute base, for example. But in general, you don't have four minute bases because you want to stay on the map as long as possible with red and blue buff to get red and blue buff value. Um, comparing it to three HP pot start, um, you don't really like. So if the Reju bead breaks even with the refill pot at three minutes, it's going to break even with the um, three HP pot start, assuming you're using all three HP pots. It's going to break even at roughly four minutes or a little less than four minutes so insofar as you're on the map that long which is completely reasonable to be an assumption you shouldn't take three pot additionally i don't like taking more than one pot at a time because the second and third pot in the inventory don't actually do anything until the first pot is used right so you could get into a fight and only be able to get one pot off and the second and third pot doesn't do anything you have actually gotten more value from the reju be there so this is going to be your starting item um, we're, we won't go into jungle routing because uh, I've made several videos on the past about that and you, that's something that you learn, not something that can really be described to you, although I can talk about it in theory in another segment. So on your initial basis, and what I mean by your initial basis is the first basis before there's an exit of the lane phase generally, right? Because I would say pre-10 minutes is the marker because ten minutes is 9 to 10 minutes is roughly the initial swap setup. Right. Um, the reason why you have AD support bot, um, AP mid, and top TP is mostly because you want everyone to have proximity to dragon. Right. Top lane has to be a lane, but you take TP to get proximity to dragon. Uh, mid is close and bot is close. But as soon as the 10 minute marker comes and herald comes, you can like swap your bot lane for situations. Like you can do, a, let's say, a, a bot to mid swap. Right. You send your mid laner to go bottom, and you send your your AD carry and support mid. The reason why you do that is because maybe you want more herald proximity. Like if you have a useless dragon, not not a useless dragon, but like a low value dragon, right? I, I consider low value dragons mountain, uh, ocean, and cloud um, in that order. One, because mountain dragon is low value because it only aggregates the amount of damage you're doing minimally, whereas you're probably going to get that objective anyway with the added benefit of like two or three seconds. Um, Ocean Dragon is a little bit valuable, but it's only situationally valuable, like in particular team comps or uh, in lanes where you're allowed to play back a little bit. Um, Cloud, obviously, you. I've never actually felt the implication that Cloud was get, making me... Like, I know it makes me a little bit faster, but it's not a strong feeling. Maybe you have, like, a slightly better rotation. But those are all pretty low-value drags. Inferno is the only really high-value drag. So when you do do a bot to mid lane swap um, for Herald Priority, like this is the time frame I'm talking about, um, pre macro setup, right? Standard top lane, standard mid lane, standard bot lane. Um, you could run into situations where you do have like a top bot lane swap, but you should generally win those scenarios, unless you're the one initiating the scenario. Either way, it's a it's the same thing. You don't really want to play those spots as Shaker because you're a high econ champion. All right, going into that end build, obviously on your first base you want to swap to sweeper. Um, same thing with the warding trinket. You want to swap the sweeper right away. The reason why you want to swap the sweeper right away is to give yourself um, the lowest cooldown on the sweeper um, as you exit the base, right? Um, you would like to base for first item Tiamat for 12 or uh, 1050, but if you don't have that, you should pick up boots over longsword. So, yeah. Um, so if you have 1200 on base, you want to pick up Tiamat, but if you, let's say you have like a or if you have 1050, you should pick up team up, but let's say you have 700, right? Um, I'm not going to buy two longswords here. I'm going to buy boots longsword. The reason why boots pr takes priority over longsword, like let's say I base with 400 gold. I'd still buy boots over longsword, right? The reason why boots take priority is because one, uh, map proximity is a uh, way more important. The boots allow you for counter gank potential, uh, potential ganks, uh, situations where it would otherwise be unlikely that you get something while the longsword sure it makes you do the camp a little bit faster so let's say you're running from base like you did your first base and now you're running to your gromp right well how fast what time in the game will it be when you finish the gromp well let's say you took boots right you're taking boots to get all the way to the gromp and you know you're going faster because you have boots there and now you do the gromp you're gonna do it a little bit slower compared to the longsword situation but you know you're getting there faster 
So let's say you take longsword, right? Let's say you take longsword. Now you're walking to the ground slower, but you're getting there, and now you're doing the ground faster. In general, the boost is going to have a higher time frame, right? You're going to get through the game faster right? Uh, by buying boots, right? So let's say this Gromp situation, uh, let's say that you were to go from base to clear the Gromp, and the time you're finished clearing the Gromp is, let's say it's five, five minutes in the game, right? Well, if you had done the same thing with the longsword, the time would be roughly 5.02. And I'm just saying this because the movement aggregation of the boots to the Gromp is going to be more than the long sword damage increase onto the grump because that's only 10 ad and the, that's just one more auto attack whereas the move speed is going to generate you consecutively more seconds so you're going to want the, want the boots first over the long sword um, so after that you're going to probably want to finish the tiamat um, the difference between boots one and uh, moby boots is pretty uh like you're going to gain a couple more seconds in the same thought process, but you really, really want Tiamat as viable or as quick as possible. Otherwise, you won't really have access to the Raptor camp unless you have Smite Up, which is, uh, which is a problem because that makes you a jungler that can't jungle, which sucks, and it's also bad for you because it also opens up that to be ta being taken in. A lot of other bad things can happen there. So the priority is Boots, then Tiamat, then Mobis. Um, you'll typically be able to get the Tiamat in that situation, so long as you're not screwing up the early game. And you're going to get Mobis after that because Mobis translates into pick potential, uh, map movement, all these consecutive seconds that are built up, right? Uh, it's the same thing. Let's say you take you know, Zerker Greaves or any other type of boot instead of Mobis, you're going to be losing those move speed seconds while increasing your output on camps and potential scenarios. But again, you won't get those potential gank scenarios without Mobis and Mobis get you to the camp faster, so you're actually saving the roughly the same amount of seconds. Plus, when you have insta burst potential, um, Zerkers are a waste of stats. And then obviously with your extra stats, uh, with your extra gold, you wanna buy one pink, um, and then priority on refill, and then priority on health pot. So now you've gone through the 10 minute marker roughly, and now you're building your second item. And a lot of people hate on the static transition. Um, I'm still a big proponent of static transition, and the reason why is because uh, the Dust Blade second, or the Warrior second, or the Triforce second uh, don't allow you to fulfill your, your role in the game, right? So again, as we established, your role in the game is to be able to one-shot the enemy uh, backline priority, or to uh, be able to kill you know, the people that are on your carry, right? So let's break down both of those scenarios. When you build Dust Blade second, Tiamat into Dustblade, you still can't one-shot anyone, right? You can do a lot of damage, but you still can't one-shot someone. And when you do build Dustblade or Triforce, same, same thing with Triforce. Triforce won't be able to one-shot anyone, right? So both of those scenarios don't allow you to accomplish the assassination goal. In fact, no second item allows you to accomplish that, right? Like Tiamat IE, Tiamat Dusk, Tiamat Triforce, none of those combos allow you to one-shot the enemy um, backline, right? And by one-shot, I mean literal one-shot. I mean no counter ability to uh you know use sums or to flash away or do anything right the the no counter play kill now you might be saying okay well it's not just me right like maybe you have a top lane camille and if you do have a top lane camille then you know they can dive with me and i only need to do 70 percent of the enemy champs hp and camille can do the other 30. that's fine that's completely reasonable right and it's there's nothing wrong with playing an assassin role like you have a team. But let's think about what that looks like, right? What's the damage you can do with Tiamat Static compared to the damage you can do with Tiamat Dusk or Tiamat Triforce, right? I would say Tiamat Dusk or Tiamat Triforce takes 70 to 80% of their HP. And I'd say Tiamat Static, um, you probably take 50% or 60% of HP, right? So you have to think about the scenario where it's going to be better to take Dusk and Triforce, potentially, and or Triforce. That mean, the conditions are, one, you have, you have a consecutive, another diver that'll go in with you. Two, um, they can deal that extra 30% of damage, right? Three, they couldn't deal 
50% of damage, right? So they have a very small time frame for viability, right? Because if they can deal 30%, like if 30% is the max they can deal, then sure, maybe Dustblade and Triforce are better in that spot. But let's say they can deal 60% or 50%, right? Then you would have still gotten the kill if you had gone static, right? It would be a waste of, uh, it'd be a waste of a stat buy because the stat transition is stronger for transitioning into a second, uh, into third items or third damage items, right? Let's say they could deal 40%, right? If they could only deal 40% of damage and you can only deal 50, sure you're missing out on a kill. But these are micro scenarios where the majority of the time, if you do have a a diver on your team, a Fizz, a Camille, it's unlikely that they're only able to do 30% of the damage to warrant you changing the build into a Dustplate or Triforce build, and more likely that they can deal at least 50% of the damage. Now, we also have to take into account what the timeline in the game is, right? The early game static transition is typically from the 10 minute to the 15 minute mark or 10 minute to the 20 minute mark, right? Depending on how the game flow is going. So during the 10 to 15 minute or 10 to 20 minute game marker, there's still fluidity on the map in lanes, right? Laners are still going to lanes in general. Um, it's the pre-baron section, right? I would say post 20 minutes is when you notoriously send, or it's mandatory to send your top lane or bot lane for TP, with TP, your mid lane or top, and then your uh, AD carry support mid, something like that, right? So in the 10 to 20 minute transi transition period, you're not in a state where killing the enemy AD carry matters that much, right? Sometimes they don't even have crit yet, right? Sometimes they only have BF or they have pickaxe boots or whatever, right? They don't actually pick up, like the AD carry doesn't actually matter that much until they have crit, right? Because crit is the stat that is most fundamental to AD carries. Um, so when Vayne has BF sword, right? That's almost akin to your top lane or your mid lane Jace having a BF sword, right? It's akin to the same. But when they have crit, they're going to get high multiplications, which is why backline AD carries are strong. So in the 10 to 20 minute mark, there's a lack of crit pickup in general, which doesn't really mean that you need to kill the AD carry in skirmishes between the 10 to 20 minute mark, right? Like even if your top lane TP's down and whatever, uh, and their top lane TP's down, and or like everyone comes down because TP's are burned and you need to have a dragon fight. In those scenarios, there's only like minimal amount of reason to justify going onto the AD carry necessarily because they're not actually doing as much as they would because they're a champion or they're a rule that scales into the game. We're not talking about lethality AD carries, right? Lethality AD carries are effectively the same as, you know, uh, Jace building lethality. So you're not really in a situation where you need Dustblade or Triforce in a high percentage of times. Yes, we did talk about the micro situations where Triforce or Dustblade could be better, but for the most, for, but most of the time, you're going to want to build static. Why? Because static allows you to get a 25 minute IE for one shot potential, right? Let's say you went Tiamat, Dustblade into another item. You're going to finish that item very, very slowly. Maybe, maybe at the same 25 minute marks if you are slow balling, but more close but closer to the 30 minute mark in general, right? Where you finish your, your next damage item. So if I'm fin so if I'm going Tiamat static IE, I have like the latest finish is generally 25 minutes. But if I'm going Tiamat Dusk Blade, you know, IE or another item, it's probably gonna be at 30 minutes, right? So once you get IE here, at this point in the game, you can one shot. You can one shot enemies without um without flash. Pretty, you can pretty much effectively one-shot uh, carries. That You can one-shot champions that don't have resist and or health at this point in the game. So let's talk about the static transition. Obviously, you'd like to have static, but what are the priority by parts of the stack, right? You want to take shard over zeal. The reason why you want to take shard over zeal is because it gives you 50 damage. Um, it gives the same amount of attack speed, but uh, you would get crit with zeal. Um, but the zeal move speed doesn't actually matter as much as the damage you would get from 50, the 50 damage that you could get. Plus, uh, you don't really care about the crit strike because you have uh, automatic crit strike with your backstab. So you're almost always going to want shard and then zeal because they give like if you're going to argue that the move speed of zeal is better than the shard, then you could you know have it in this manner. It's perfectly fine, right? Like, what's going to matter more? You moving around the map more or you having 50 damage? That's up to you. Um, 
I'd say that for lesser experienced players, take the shard first. But for more experienced players like myself, take the zeal first. Move speed is going to matter a little bit more. Um, Five percent move speed because you're not one-shotting anyone anyway, right? You're just going to want to walk around the map. And then after that, you're going to want to prioritize the dagger after Brawler's Glove. Same reason, attack speed is going to actually translate into DPS, while uh, Brawler's Glove has low value since you have auto crits. And same pink refill uh, pot as available. So now you're at the 20-minute mark. Now you're, you know, Baron spawning, or it's like 15 minutes, and, you know, it's close to the Baron game, right? Um, the you don't have enough slots to warrant taking any odd items, right? So you already have Tiamat, you have Static, you have Mobius, you have Machete because you're not going to sell that because you need it for the EXP. So now you only have two slots left. And with two slots left, the ideal two slots are going to be BF Pickaxe into IE, right? So let's say you did, let's say after your Static you got Poacher's Dirk, right? You're going to run into a lot of problem scenarios where you can maybe buy BF on base or buy pickaxe on base, but then you're going to be sitting on a lot of gold a lot of the time because you don't have enough slot filters, right? Um, I'm not very pro Poacher's Dirk because Poacher's Dirk is a situation where if you're losing, you're not going to be able to counter jungle them anyway. And if you're winning, then you probably don't need the Poacher's Dirk anyway, right? It's a it's a min value situation on the Poacher's Dirk. Um, you can do it in some situations, right? Like you're, you're already really strong in the game. You're about to end the game and then their jungler is... Their jungle isn't theirs, and you can buy Poacher's Dirk and then do it from there, like after your IE or something. But even then, it's extremely unlikely that you're going to need to do that. So it's just better to not get Poacher's Dirk in general. I would say never buy Poacher's Dirk. Um, so yeah, this is pretty standard. Um, you're going to prioritize getting the BF, but get the pickaxe on the base if you you know if you have that. Uh, if you have an extra slot, if you have an extra slot, you know get the standard items, and then finish IE. Right. So once you have IE, you enter critical stage. Critical stage is what at the 25 minute mark roughly, or it can be a little bit early, 22 to 25 minute is typically when you should be getting your IE. And when you have this, you can one shot, um, you can one shot champions who will not have any health or armor additives, right? So I'm gonna be able to one shot the vein with ultimate. This is with ultimate. Um, so let's say veins alone bottom, I can queue in, I can get an angle. I uh, get behind them, or I get behind where I think they're going to go. I ult, and then I get auto attack from me, auto attack from clone, uh, Tiamat proc, shiv, and that'll proc electrocute if you took electrocute. And you'll still be able to kill them if you have dark harvest. Um, at this point, you should probably have dark harvest at 150, roughly. Right? Um, so yeah, that'll be it. Um, if you don't have Dark Harvest finished yet, they might be able to live with like 5% or 10% HP and flash away or heal away or something like that. Um, so that's a minor issue with taking Dark Harvest, but like you, you typically have Dark Harvest finished by 25 minutes. So it's just like a three minute window where you might not be able to kill them, which you can just play around by doing other things, right? If you do have Electric, you should be able to kill them. And... Then we go into the late game scenario, right? So then you pick up Duskblade. Duskblade is a situation where if you had took Dark Harvest, now here's where you get the returns. Um, you'll be able to one-shot people without using uh, ultimate with your Dark Harvest stack up 150 above, right? So in this scenario, if the vein's at bottom, uh, you can queue in. If you get a backstab Tiamat, uh, auto E or E auto, um, they're just dead, right? You, they're pretty much just dead with auto, Tiamat, E most of the time. You don't even need to get the, the extra auto most of the time. So, um, yeah, it's pretty much just insta-kill from there. Uh, it's pretty easy. Dustblade allows you to move around the map undetected. Um, you can still ult for security if you think it's still a little early on in the game, but you should be able to kill them most of the time. Um, if you did take Electrocute, though, you need to ult. You won't be able to kill anyone without ulting ever. Um, once you took Electrocute, which is why Dark Harvest is so strong. Um, obviously, you want to build Dirk before Warhammer because Warhammer doesn't actually do anything for you. Um, at this point, you'll only ever have one slot available, so you should have that slot for pinks, unless you already have a pink on the map, in which case you can buy an HP pot or a refill pot. Um, and then you're going to want to build LDR. 
The reason why you want to build LDR now or Lord Doms is because uh, you're going to want to be able to kill everyone on the map, right? Not just carries, but everyone. So let's say there are scenarios where the Vein built Ninja Tabby. You wouldn't really be able to kill them until you got the LDR in the late game, right? Uh, which kind of sucks because to, to say that you won't be able to kill Vayne with five items, four damage items, is really bad. Um, so let, let's say the Vayne goes Ninja Tabby, then you're going to need some assistance to kill. Or you can ult with Dusk Blade, Dark Harvest, and you'll probably be able to kill them, even if they have Ninja Tabby. So that's going to be the situation most of the time. Uh, but if you do get LDR, you'll be able to kill the tanks. You'll be you'll be able to kill anyone, right? You'll effectively be able to 1v1 anyone. You'll be able to peel. You'll be able to do everything. LDR just gives you access to alternative routes of winning the game, such as peel and all that. Um, so that's a standard build. I want to I want to note that when I talk about them not having resist, I also mean talking about them not having champion proximity, right? So let's say like they have a Janna. They're getting a little more effective health with a shield that they could get, right? Or let's say that they just have a cloth armor. You should be able to kill that person, but you won't be able to kill that person if they have a cloth armor and a D-blade, because that's health and armor. Minimal things like that are important to note. Um, you also want to be very careful with your picks, right? If you're just going and picking, trying to pick someone off in the middle lane with everyone missing, uh, most of the time, you're probably going to trade one for one at best, right? You're going to kill their carry, and then they're going to kill you. Which is, albeit, isn't a horrible trade, right? Leaving a 4v4 on the map where you have an 80 carry up is okay. But, like, that's not a spot you necessarily need to take unless things are extremely dire, right? You can look for a better spot to pick, in general. Like, when people are showing, or when they're in a side lane, or, you know, when you have wards in the center of the lane so that you can follow them and pick. Um, what do you want to do in the late game item swap situation? Well, obviously, you want to finish your... Ravenous, and you want to swap out Static for Triforce, just because Triforce does more damage than Static. Remember, we're only doing Static as a transition to get our third item quick. And obviously in the late, late game when you have extra gold, you're going to be wanting to build the Elixir. You're going to want to sell your Mobis to put a ZZ Rock Portal down, maybe near your base, maybe not near your base. Uh, sell your Mobis to get a banner, put it you know, on the alternative wave, like bot lane if Baron's up, for example. And but make sure you have enough money to sell the banner. Or make sure you calculate your money so that you can you know, sell the item back, get your mobis, and then play it from there. Um, and that's going to be the item build. So that should wrap up our situation. Obviously, we didn't talk about jungle routing, and but we did touch upon macro a little bit. So for those of you that were interested in my thoughts going into the season these are the builds i'm going to be playing in terms of runes and item build uh, feel free to follow the youtube i'll be putting a little more detail into it now that the season started follow twitch uh, just in the 459 i'll be streaming during the times i said at the start of the game and i'll be tweeting about it before i go live hopefully we'll be going uh, we'll, we'll probably get challenger this season see you guys next time